We're talking to Steve Bryce. He's a chief investment strategist at Standard Chartered. Steve, thank you so much for joining us today. I want to talk to you about what's going on right now more broadly in the Asian markets. Of course, next week we're going to end Q1. What do you expect to see or change going into Q2? Well, I think the, the, the key thing now is going to be we've had a very strong uh, first quarter. Obviously, um, sentiment has weakened in the, in the past month. But um, prior to that, we've seen a very strong uh, quarter, um, led but obviously by the U.S. economic surprise uh, in terms of the data being stronger than expected there. So the, the key now is, is, is that going to, are we going to build on those gains and, and continue higher? Our, our general feeling is the answer to that question is yes. Um, we still see the economy in the U.S. as strengthening. Yes, it's uh, failing to surprise on the upside to the degree it was earlier in the year, but it's still doing pretty well. Um, and then, obviously, the focus is going to be on what happens to the Chinese economy. We've seen weakness coming through there. Uh, some signs that that might be uh, reversing out, although you have to really dig into the detail to get there. Uh, and, and that that could be positive or negative for Chinese stocks, of course. You could say a, a recovery is positive, but it reduces the need uh, for the PBOC to ease policy uh, significantly, uh, and that might actually inhibit short-term gains but make them more sustainable when they come. Let's talk about China. You just mentioned it. What exactly do you foresee happening in terms of policy? And then ultimately, who is that going to benefit in China? Well, I, I think from our perspective, we still see the scope for significant easing. Obviously, inflation has come down markedly. Uh, the economy is, is still uh, fairly fragile. Um, we, we sort of, on, from an economic perspective, see uh, a, a sort of bumpy landing uh, from our side, so not a hard landing that a lot of people have been fearful of, but uh, a bumpy first half and then a, a strong recovery in the second half. To get there, though, we do need monetary easing of a significant order. We're looking at uh, another uh, four RRR cuts coming out from the, the PBOC uh, during the course of this year. Ideally, they would be front-loaded. That looks a little bit unlikely in, in, the, in the short term. Um, so so that, that's sort of the, the picture. Uh, from, from who will benefit? Uh, clearly, the, I think the key thing is that the uh, authorities are trying to shift uh, investment spend from investment spending uh, to consumer spending. They've really struggled to do that in a, in a meaningful way. Um, so, you know, if they manage, that's going to be the key uh, focus over the next five years, uh, obviously, and that's going to be something that we're, we're watching out for as well. So, in terms of sectors, uh, we still like the consumer sector. We still believe that's undervalued uh, and also subject to uh, potential strong growth going forward. Steve, I want to double-click on that last part of your comment where you talked about consumerism. Of course, Premier Wen Jiabao last month injected about $2.3 billion into this fund to help some of these SMEs, these small, medium enterprises. The idea being that they were the ones that really needed the most help because a lot of these bigger conglomerates could really rely on global consumerism. To what extent do you think that, that is important? And to what extent do you think we're going to see a further increase of really helping some of these smaller companies? Because the, the thesis being that you help the smaller companies, you help most consumers in China? Well, I think it's not just from a, a direct consumer's perspective, but more indirectly through, through employment. Obviously, employment is still going to be a very key focus for the authorities. Uh, creating jobs um, it, it is a challenge in an economy that they uh, acknowledge is going to grow slower in the future than it has done historically. Um, you know, uh, getting credit uh, to SMEs so that they can grow uh, and increase hiring is going to be a, a, is, is sort of a major push. Uh, for the authorities. It's the same actually globally. It's not just a, a Chinese phenomenon. Obviously, the U.S. has had similar issues over the last couple of years as well. Um, but uh, we really look at it from that perspective. Uh, and, and assuming that they're successful, um, you know, again, that will help uh, support the growth outlook. Uh, 7.5 to us still seems like a low number. Uh, we still feel that we're going to see um, over 8% for the full year and probably you know, 9 to 10% in the second half of the year. Oh, wow, 9 to 10 percent. We'll be watching to see if that actually happens. Thank you so much, Steve Bryce from uh, Standard Charter, the Chief Investment Officer there.